morning ladies today I am doing the my version of the um, creating with details pillow kit so as you can see I haven't opened it yet but I'm sure you've probably seen a couple other people that have done theirs and now I'm going to have my turn just look at all the yummy oh yay so we have a spray. I love these. We have some of this pearls on um, a string or on a like fishing line. Some of this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous trim. Oh, I wish you could feel this. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the detail. So I have a couple of pieces of that. Look at all this. Amazing. And we have some bling. Some seam binding. Some more beautiful. Oh, mercy. And this one I absolutely loved. I loved when I was watching May do hers. Um, I fell in love with this charm, so I'm excited to be able to, to play with it, and then this gorgeous image, so beautiful, and some more trims, and this, oh, I would so love to have some yardage in this, look at that, isn't that beautiful, I love it, and of course, the canvas pillow okay. So let's get started and play. Now I did buy ha a pillow form um, for the for the pillowcase. However, I wasn't uh, didn't have the brain engaged when I did so because I ended up buying a 16 by 16 oops and this is a 14 by 14 so I'll have to just show it to you minus the pillow being inserted um, but y you'll figure it out you'll know what to do so let's see here I'm gonna do a little playing I hope I don't bore you to pieces while I do so, but I just want to play a little, a little wee bit because I might want to do something just a tad bit different. Maybe. I'm not sure yet. I'm just playing because I haven't had a chance. It's been super busy here. Um, so I haven't had a chance to really play with this. It is pretty. I mean, no matter what you put around this gorgeous image, it's going to come out beautiful. So let me have a, a little play here. Let's see what this would look like around the edge. I mean, that's going to be gorgeous no matter where you put it. I think I'm going to use this one along this edge here. I think, I think, I think, I think. Okay, so we know we have this on here. And I also have to put some of this on here. What I'm wondering is if I do this. And then this, oh, that would be pretty. Like I said, no matter which way we go, it's going to be gorgeous. So I am going to start with this. Don't know why I just turned that because every corner is the same. So I got to get this in the right corner for me. I'm just going to do this little tuck like like this and then just um, I'm going to glue right to the edge of this little stitching right here 
right on the edge of the pillowcase. So let's just get started. Make sure I got the right side. The fold, no, oh crap. So I'm going to glue that right in the corner here. Like so. I'm going to have to be a little more cautious with how I do this because I don't have one of those fancy finger things. You know, those little glue gun helpers? I don't have one yet. May is going to be carrying them at creatingwithdetails.com or creatingwithdetailsstore.com, but they haven't come in yet. They're on back order. And I'm like chomping at the bit because I really want one. It just saves on the fingers and on the fingernails if you happen to, you know, do your nails up. Make sure I'm still in, or that I'm in frame. I'm not even sure that I was, so. Excuse me. Hi, ladies. I'm back. I am sorry about the interruption, but... While I was interrupted, I went ahead and glued all of this um, eyelet trim, I guess you call it eyelet trim, all the way around the pillow. And I started to glue um, this gorgeous rosette fabric down and remembered I wasn't on camera. So I stopped what I was doing and turned the camera on so that I could finish. Um, I don't know whether to call it a blonde moment or a sometimes moment. So I'm just going to opt for blonde. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So what I'm doing is just going around and gluing, just covering up that ickiness there. And I'll trim this off um, after I get done. Gluing it on here. It just seemed the easiest way to do this was just glue it down and then trim it off afterwards. And I gotta tell you, honest truth, I had to um, unglue a little bit of this eyelet because I um, pleated and gathered a bit too much and a little bit short. So um, you might want to consider just a, you know, just an idea, an option, um, like pre-gathering your eyelet before you put it on. Um, it might make placement of the little pleats easier. Of course, I evidently don't have a brain cell today because I didn't even think of that before I started gluing. So all I can say is, duh, Robin. Duh. Duh. But you know, that's just one of those things that you know when you're when you're playing and when you're gluing, you figure out as you go. So I thought I would share that little tidbit with you on my blooper goofer. You know I didn't show it, because I don't have some of that that glue off stuff you know that's supposed to take off um, hot glue. So. I had to use my blow dryer and just kind of heat it up and make that some more glue. But you could, um, if you wanted, you could actually sew this entire thing, although I would be cautious when sewing it because you would have to catch it right on the edge because see here um, if you sewed in too far you wouldn't be able to get your pillow in there very easily so just a word of caution if you do decide to do it that way keep that in mind when you're sewing so I'm just going along and just trimming right next to where I've glued this, just trimming off the excess because we have another layer of 
gorgeous trim to put on here. I'm not sure I should have checked before I started the video um, just how many kits are left. If there are any, I'm not sure. Um, so you might, if you're interested, you might want to run over and order one before they are gone because these are made in a limited number and they are you know a one-time only kit so it's kind of an exclusive thing if you wanna make one you have to hurry before they're gone because these kits don't typically last very long and I love the kits because there's you know I mean there's still creativity involved in, in the way that you put your spin on it but it's not like you have to completely design it and figure out what you know what elements um, what laces and trims and you know all of that kind of thing have to go in it because um, May's already figured all that out for you so, so I think I have it all trimmed up just a bit here I'm sorry if I'm off camera. This is kind of large, and for some reason, my camera seems awfully big to me today, and I've got the control zoomed all the way out. So, I was just trimming off. All right, so there we have that, and I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see about, I'm going to look at the back of this. Okay, so she's got to go that way. And then may included another piece of this trim, which we could put here. I'm not sure. I'm going to hold off on that for right now. What I do want to play with, however, is this one. I'm going to make sure because May measured these um, pieces of trim um, for the way that she designed it. So I want to make sure that if I switch things up a bit that I'm going to have enough to do that. These are both gorgeous. Okay, I'm going to have to use this one around the edge. Yeah. To make sure I've got the right side. And what I'm going to do is get this in frame. And I'm going to start right here on this corner. Because you're going to have to tuck around the corners a little bit. So, I think we'll go just like that. Just because see where this little scallop kind of ends, this little dip right here kind of ends right at the edge between the rosette fabric and the eyelet. So, I'm going to start right there. And I'm not gluing the bottom half of this down. I'm going to leave that so we can get a little bit of movement. I'm just dabbing. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to use this. I'm out of the fabric tack but I have used, this is the Aliens Tacky Glue. Dries clear. And uh, I think I can get this done a little quicker because this gives you more working time too so I'm just going to go down through here and I'm going to go right on the edge I'll stop see right on the edge where this fabric and then I'll go back through and tuck the rest of this down you can probably use the glue gun for that but 
this just seems a little bit faster to me. And I don't want to do, you know, an hour and a half video where y'all watch me glue stuff. Because you might get bored. You might. I don't want bored people. And then I'll just go through. Just kind of dab a little bit of hot glue here and there just to secure these down just a bit. It's a pillow, so it's not like it's going to get a whole lot of, you know, use. I mean, as far as overuse where you have to be, you know, really super cautious about getting every little bit glued down because um, hopefully your kids won't use this for a football. I know Mine probably would have thought about it, but then they would have realized that would get him a whole lot of trouble. So, if, if you think your kids might use this for a football, your grandkids, or whatever the case may be, you might want to reconsider how you glue it. Just saying. I am just tucking this right here. Let me move this up just a little bit. This is a little bit hard to get in the, the camera so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And this one I am gluing with the hot glue gun because it's a corner. And I want to make sure that it's down really well. There we have that. And I am dropping this stuff. Okay, see here, I just tucked that corner over. Let me go to the next corner. Like, see right here? You have this. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. You have this. So I'm just tucking it like so. It's where the two flowers kind of meet, like that. See, just hold it right in the middle of that spot right there, and then just glue it down. And like I said, I'm paying a little more attention on the corners just because I want to make sure that if it gets caught on something, it doesn't, you know, rip off. Because that would be not good. Okay. So, I will be back as soon as I get this glued. Be right back. Okay, got that glued down. As you can see, I glued all this all the way around. Now, I want to center this in the center of the pillow. Make sure that I've got the the um, opening in the back going right. And you know what? I'm not even going to deal with this. I am just going to use some of this Aileen's Tacky Glue. Just because I want to be able to smooth this all out. And not have any rough bumps from, you know, like the glue gun when it dries. It can be kind of rough. So... I'm just going, I'm zigzagging in the middle, going all around the edges. And then, I didn't take the backing off. I just figured that would give it just that little added extra security. Do I have that straight? No, I don't. Because I'm doing that sometimes. There we go. Okay, now we are going to take this trim that we have here. And I was looking at this and I was thinking, Let me see if I'm thinking correctly or if my brain is on misfire again. 
I'm wondering if I just cut. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. So I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to cut these little pieces out here and just leave this to go around the outside. So I'll be right back. Okay, I have cut off part of this. And what I did, I didn't do the whole thing because I don't think I'm going to need to, is I just, see how that fits right in between these little, I don't know, they look like mini fans. And you're left with something that looks like this little banner. May be able to use that on here, who knows. So what I'm going to do, and one of the reasons that I did this is not only do you get you know, more use out of one trim doing that, but also I don't have to use as much of the trim to go around here. So as you can see, all I have to do is butt these where that V is. I'm just going to butt those two edges of the fans together. So... There is a method to my madness, I hope. I hope it's not just total insanity. I think we all teeter on the edge of that sometimes. So what I'm doing is just kind of butting this up together. And if there's a little gap, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be covering it with this um, gimp trim. So it's going to cover up all these rough edges that we may have here. So, let me continue to glue here. And I'm just doing small sections at a time. Um, it's a little bit fussy here and there, but not that bad. This one doesn't want to go down, I guess. Whoops! I put one of those glue rolls in and they tend to want to take off on me when they're new. See how that's kind of gathering itself like that? Like, you know, making it a little more pleated. And like I said, this is going to go on top of this. So, you will not see this. When you um, cut those other little, the other part of the um, The trim off the part that looks like to me looks like a banner um, it gives this a little more stretchability and you can just easily just kind of tuck and glue around the circle I kind of um, if I had my little glue thingy this would be a whole lot easier So see how it's doing that? I'm just kind of pushing and pulling and tucking. I suppose if you wanted to, you could like run, you know, cut this apart and then run this um, piece through your sewing machine, but who wants to go through all that? Not I. But it's an option if you so choose. Actually, you could do all of this with the sewing machine if you wanted to. My only concern is, like I said, if you start stitching on this, because um, see, this is way up here. Oops. And there's the opening on the back. So you would have to, you know, you'd be cutting off a good deal of that. So don't recommend that you do that because then you're going to have trouble unless you use like a fiber fill um, to stuff the pillow rather than an actual you know pillow form which I suppose you could do if you wanted to 
And since I was a bonehead and bought the wrong size um, pillow form, that's what happens when you're doing three or four things at once and your brain is not engaged. I don't know about you guys, but summertime is busy, busy, busy. It seems like there's twice as many things that need to get done as there are. Oh, there it goes. It said bye bye. Just jumped right off my desk. Okay. Alrighty then. Let's try this. Starting over again. But as you can see, I still have, um, like, let's see, I still have this much that I have not cut. Like, I've cut it right up to here. And I probably wouldn't have had to cut it that far, but I wanted to make sure that I had enough. And I have, if I do have enough that I've cut off, I want to use this to put in the flower that I'm going to make. And as you can see, that little, as May calls it, the little glue finger. Maybe that's what it really is called. I don't know. Um, would come in really handy right about now. I think I'm just going to have to hold this thing in my hand because every time I set it down, it wants to fly off my desk. But as you can see, I'm just gluing and tucking. Just glue and tuck, glue and tuck. That's all I'm doing here. And if there's any pieces that, you know, like stick up on here, you can go back and, you know, just dab a little glue on there and um, secure them down. But they're also going to get secured um, when we put the gimp trim around the the edge of this. One of the things that I love about the trims that May carries, number one, high quality, number two, affordability, number three, versatility. Um, the trims that she buys are so easy to, you know, get multiple uses out of them just by doing what I'm doing right now. I can't tell you how many trims um, I've done this with and it is amazing what you can do. I mean you still have the same elements just you get so much more usage out of it. And see this is really ruffling nicely the way that I hoped it would um, around the circle and we're going to use the rest of that. I have an idea for what might work. I'm not sure whether it will, but it might um, for the banner part of it. But we're going to find out here in just a minute because we're nearing the end. Boy, I'm just knocking everything down today. We're nearing the end of this trim here. I'm not sure why, but today I have some shakes. So if you see me going, not to fret, I'm not, you know, going totally insane. Just got a little shakies today. Probably because it's Monday. Your body says, oh no, I'm not ready for that. Even if you don't have a 9 to 5 Monday through Friday, you know, Monday's still Monday. And all the same thing happen, same things happen on Monday, um, whether you work a traditional 9 to 5 or not. At least I found that to be true. 
I always said when I worked outside of the home that um, it was much more organized, got a lot more done because, you know, when you stay home um, and work from home, you, you tend to procrastinate a bit. But I still seem to be constantly busy. Constantly. I always thought when my kids were grown that, you know, I would have a lot more free time on my hands. Ha! Not so. Didn't work that way. But I would much rather be busy than have nothing. Um, I had a job one time that I was in um, a local university and I was just looking through the, you know, the job postings and um, a hiring agent came through and wanted to know what I was looking for and, you know, I explained that, you know, something clerical um, and, uh, you know, hired me right on the spot. You know, and this was several years ago for $10 an hour, which at that time was, you know, pretty decent money. Well, the job was simply answering phones. And the phone maybe rang four or five times a day. Now, some people might think, hey, gravy job, right? Well, I guess. But let me just tell you, I was bored out of my gourd after about three or four days, I was going around the department going, uh, have you got anything I can do? Anything at all? I mean, seriously, if I've got to be here, I want to be busy. I want to, I don't want my day to drag on where I'm looking at the clock and it's only five minutes later than the last time I looked at it because I'm so bored. So, like I said, I would much rather be super busy than not busy at all. Cannot. Standing that. Cannot. So I am going to cut this right here in the center. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. And finish this off. I'm going to put the gimp trim on it. And we're going to have a little play with some of this, um, the rest of this trim. Now, in, um, on May's pillow, she um, provided an extra piece of, wow, I didn't even count that. That came out great. You, I couldn't do that again if I wanted to. That was just purely accidental when I counted just the right amount. Um, fingers there. Okay. May also provided um, this extra piece of, um, it's like an eyelet trim that um, she, you know, cut and put here and here. I'm not going to put that on here, but I am going to kind of make a flower, I think, out of some of this. So I'll be right back. Okay, all I can say is thank goodness for the ability to meld all of these little segments together. Have you ever had one of those days where you think your calendar's clear and, hey, we're going to get this done? Uh, yeah, no, not so much today. Holy camoly. That's another thing when you don't work the typical 9 to 5 outside the home. Um, you know, people are always calling on you to help with this or help with that or just dropping by to chit chat which is great and I take the time to do these things it's just a little frustrating when you're trying to get things finished okay now I have that piece of tape stuck on my finger <laughs> seriously okay so I'm gonna glue this gimp trim right on here to cover up these little rough edges and I'm going to add just a dab right here 
where the gimp, uh, when you cut it, it kind of tends to unravel. Hence the reason for the tape. Because all of this will unravel. I've done it. It's not fun. Not at all. So, I'm going to get this part done. And barring any unforeseen interruptions, hopefully, be able to finish this up a little more quickly. I absolutely love the combination of white and like ivory or you know like a cream. I just think that is such a it's so beautiful. It's shabby. It's vintage. And this photo is definitely vintage. I think. Not to mention it's a little angel. I want to make sure I don't cover up that. Can you see that little dove right there? I love that little dove. And then I have some other, I'm going to use some of that to make a flower. Because we have to have flowers on a shabby pillow. It's a law somewhere. I know it's written down. I just know it is. So I don't know what kind of weather y'all are having in your neck of the woods here. Um, we had some torrential rains. Um, but today it is just beautiful. Now, this didn't quite meet right here because I probably didn't get it on there right, but that doesn't matter either because that's where I'm going to put my flower. I stretched it, but I'm still putting my flower there, so. It's still where it's going to go. So there we have that. I really like that. Now I have, well, I have these two pieces here that um, this is the same trim that went around here. And I just cut part of this off and I'm going to gather this to make part of the flower. And then this comes in the kit. This I'm also going to use to make part of the flower. And we have. Oops. We have these pearls and we have this spray, which is absolutely gorgeous. I absolutely adore these things. Um, very seldom do I use them in one piece. I usually end up, you know, cutting them apart, but we'll see what we do with this one. So I'm going to set those aside for last. And then, of course, I have the. Um, the seam binding that I'm going to turn into a bow and this I believe will be the center of my flower. Let me take this out. So I got the two sleeves and I got to take that clasp off the back because this is actually a brooch. Now you could leave this on here if you wanted to and just um, you know, change your flower center as you want to. I'm not planning on changing it, so I'm taking mine out. So, that beauty. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So, before I do the flower, I am going to play with some of this trim that I cut apart. Kind of like that. Like a little banner. Maybe. And then we also have, we could also do this. I wish I would have lifted that. I still could lift that up and put this underneath. I guess if I chose to. Hmm. 
I'm going to cut this off right here. I might use that on the flowers. Let's see what we can do with this. We might be able to do. Let's try this. Let's just try it and see what we come up with. Just a tiny bit. And tuck that underneath there. Let's see, that's one, two, three. Let's do three again. And go like this. That's kind of cool. And we also have. These two little pieces right here that were left over from this or this trim right here. This trim. I have to figure out where my fingers belong. I'm gonna cut this little excess off of here, like so. Okay. And I'm going to see what that looks like right here. Do I need both of those if I'm going to do that? Yes, yes I do. Because that looks silly. Like that, it's different. I like it different. And you see how just um, cutting apart the trims gives you a whole nother level of possibilities. Um, let's see if. We could maybe, I think we might be able to make a little flower out of this. Maybe, maybe. If I just gather it a little bit, it'd be like a four pointed flower. Possibility trying to decide if I actually like this on here or not. Or maybe I want to take this off and just do this. Or, oh, I kind of like that. Now, where's the other piece? Oh, wait. Just do like one in each corner. Yes, I'm going with it. Oops, stepping on the cord for my glue gun. So I'm just tacking this down with a little bit of glue. Make sure that's going straight. Here we have that one. That looks cool. I like that. Oh, you couldn't see that, could you? Sorry. You could see this one. And I'll move that down here in just a second so you can see what I did over on the other side. I just put them in opposite corners. With the um, longer tips pointing toward the picture. And that's the fun thing about these kits. You have artistic license to 
do whatever you want to do. So there I have that one. And then this I have in the opposite corner. So they're kind of, there we go. You can kind of see them both. Okay, so we have that. And now I think what I'm going to do is cut these flowers apart because I have an idea. And I can always put these back together if I don't like how my idea turns out. Boing. So I think what I want to do is put one here. I'm going to have to cut this off some more, I think. Put these in opposite corners like that, and then use this one in the flower. Yes! I love it! We're going for it. And I'm just kind of flattening this down a little bit. Whoops. Wait a minute. I need to point the leaf the other way. There we go. I like it, I like it, I like it a lot. Okay. And then just kind of just smashing those flowers down a little bit. Now obviously this is not a pillow for laying on. This is a decorative pillow because there's elements on here that would not feel good on the skin. So that gives us even more freedom to do what we want. So I think next what I'm going to do, I'm going to save this flower to go in here somewhere. I'm still, you know, I don't even know if I want to do anything here. I'm going to save these for last and we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it looks. So, and I'm going to set these, at least this one, to the side for now. If I don't use it on here, I will use it on something. So I think right now I'm going to make my, my bow. And I love working with this and with the Sari Ribbon. They make absolutely perfect bows. So, I'm going to make mine like a multi-loop. I think what I'm going to do is fold this in half because there's a lot of it here and I want a big bow. So I'm going to fold this in half, put the two ends together. And I'm going to start winding. I'm going to leave some relatively longer tails. And I want to make a multi-loop bow so I'm going in and out of my fingers just like that. And this will, by doubling it, it will give me a lot of fullness. You, you could, you know, put yours in half, cut yours in half or Know, how, make them however you like to make them. Um, I think what I'm going to do is smush this back down a little bit. And come up. I'm going to go around here, so I'll go around here and then go down. Yes, I talked to myself. Don't lie, you know you do it too. And then I'm going to use this um, piece of seam binding that was in here. And I'm just going to tie a knot in the center. Oops. That one 
was a dummy thing to do. I just did a blooper. See what I did? I didn't tie in the end of the tie. Big dummy stupid head. You just never know what kind of goof up Robin's gonna make, but it's usually fixable. that in there and then try this again. I feel like I'm all thumbs and fingers right now doing this. So there we go. And now we can adjust some of these. I'm going to cut this one. Just fussing with the loops here, trying to get them all going the same way. Get this one, which I'm going to bring down. And I'm going to do this. I learned this from Michelle Pipling. And I love the way it just shabbies it up. Just makes it all wrinkly, and I love that. I don't know why, but titching. So, this is where the bow is going to go, like so. And I can continue to fuss with this. But I think before I glue this on, I want to um, I'll cut off these a little bit. They're just a little bit too long. There we go. Before I glue this down, I want to um, make some flowers. I, am, I know I'm going to have to cut this piece off. Well, no, I'm going to wait because I don't know that. Where did I put my needle and thread? Okay, I'll be right back. We're going to have to add another portion. Okay, I'm back. Yet again. And I'm just going to do a running stitch. I was looking for um, my big needle. I thought it was right here. And lo and behold, I did that weird, strange thing that we crafters do from time to time. I had straightened up in here. And unfortunately, when I straighten up, I tend to lose things. So I'm using the standard needle and I also am out of my um, quilting thread so I'm gonna have to be kind of careful oh, I keep getting caught on my stamens here in my flower okay so I'm gonna have to be careful about um, pulling this too hard don't like to make these without the quilting thread but if I have any it's probably where my needle is and you know, I'll find that just as soon as I'm done. It always happens that way. Can't find what you need when you need it. And the minute you're finished and you don't need it anymore, it pops up. Okay, see how this is tangling up on me? I don't like that. That's why I like using the... Sorry, I have to go off frame here for a minute because it's getting tangled. Um, that's why I like using the quilting thread because you don't get as much as that of this as you do the quilting thread. You don't get as much of this tangling as you do with this regular thread. This is like a polyester thread. So. 
Okay. That tangle is done. Just going to keep doing a running stitch. And I'm also going to incorporate some of the other, you know, like this lace that I kind of cut up. I'm going to cut some pieces up and put those in there. And I still have my pearl string to put in here too. So we're getting there. We're in the home stretch. You see, if I had my long needle, I could have gathered this whole thing without having to stop. Not only that, but these little needles tend to make your fingers cramp up. Oh, now we're going to get caught in a bow. Well, I'm just a hot mess today. Mercy. It's a good thing I don't go out. I didn't go out anywhere today unsupervised because I might have got in trouble. Because my brain's not engaged. I'm still going to call it Monday. It's just Monday. Okay. Probably didn't need to make this thread quite so long, but I hate threading a needle. Does anybody else? Ugh. If I was smart enough, I'd, make, I'd invent like an automatic needle threader for any size needle, any size thread, whatever. Just thread it for me. Especially on a day like today when I got those shakers going on, for some reason it's like yee, trying to get that thread inside the needle. Mm -hmm. Should film it and put it on America's Funniest Home Videos or something. It's just reality, ladies. Just reality. I think even when I was younger, I had difficulty with that. I think. So now I'm just going to join these in a ring. Well, first, I'm going to gather this up and then I'll do a locking stitch. On those demons again. And the bow. And the snarls. Maybe I need a nap. A little late, a little late for that. Too many things going on. And the grandson will be home shortly. And it's time to get dinner on. So no nap. Probably should have done this off camera too because I know this has got to be about as boring as all get out. Because y'all know how to do this. And probably not as spastically as I'm doing it. So. Okay. There's that one. And I am going to play with those little pieces. Where'd those pieces go? Here they are. These pieces that I I wanted to try this one. I just want to play and see if this would actually work. For like, you know, a little flower center. Like a three layer flower. Maybe four. So I just want to see when I gather this. 
if you not like it. Yes, yes, I do. Because you see, I can put this right here and then put the bling. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay. And I still have a big long piece of this left. Well, not big long, but more than enough to use on another project if I so decide to. Again, I don't need this one as big because I seriously just want this to go like in the center. I'm not sure that I'm even going to use that other, this, um, I guess it's a, uh, called an eyelet. I might, I'm going to try it and see, but I don't know, I might like it without it. I might, I might. Let's see, what do we got here? Is that enough? Flip it around here. That's enough. So I'm going to finish up right here. I'm going to cut this off. There. And that makes such a cute little flower, it really does. You can even make these. Um, into block and stitch. You could make these uh, little tiny flowers and put like, um, you could put bling or you could put buttons or you could put flat back curls. Because there is enough of this left, you could. Um, make up some more flowers to just dab here and there. So I'm just going to straighten this out. And since I've locked it, I'm just going to cut this. Just dab a little bit of glue right here where they overlap. And I'm stepping on the cord again. I'm telling you, I'm a hot mess. See how cute that is? Isn't that cute? So I'm going to put that right on top of here. And then what do I do with my, oh, here it is. And this is going to go in the center. And this is going to go on here like this and I'm not going to use this so I'll save this for another pro or another um, project that over here with my other little pieces and I'm gonna get some of these see I have enough of this that I could probably do a couple more of these little flowers and just kind of, you know, put them on here. I'm not going to, but you could. And then there's still this piece that I have left. Um, which I could, I don't know. Do I want to do this? Let me just see if I want to do this. Cut that off on the side there. Nope. I like it just like it is. Don't want anything there to take away from. I want the focal point to be be beautiful. Oh, and I have this too. So, all right, that's the game plan. Now I've got to cut some of this too. Or I could just do it like this. Now I'm going to cut half of this up here because it just seems like it might be kind of long. 
and then maybe go like this. Get rid of this labeling thread here. We don't need that anymore. Maybe I won't use both of them. I still think that's going to be too much. Right. So first thing I'm going to do is, oops, just glue my bow down. So I'm just gluing it right here. Oops, right there where it's tied together. Like so. And now I'm going to glue this down. My grandson is home from school. I just heard things thumping. All right, so before I do that, I want to, I do want to add these. This right work here. And we'll put this on top. And I'm just kind of pushing that down inside that little opening from this slice that I gathered. And I also want to attach this flower. I don't know if I want it here or down here. Yeah, down here. So I'm just going to open up my And then I'm going to um, add my center. Now I probably should have used some E6000 on here, but so we have that. I think I do want that. I'm going to cut off another piece of this and kind of double it over. Put this right underneath the flower. I'm just going to put that underneath that leaf. Okay, that's a wrap. Now I will take some better pictures because I know this is really hard to see. But there is the bow and the flowers. I'll just kind of go slowly so you can see. And I, like I said, 
when I take the pictures, I am going to temporarily stuff this with fiber fill because I did purchase the wrong size pillow. Um, but that's only a temporary. I can always take the fiber fill out. But I did want to show you these. This is what I have left from this kit that I can use on something else. So I hope that you've enjoyed this, ladies. And if you do, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and share if you haven't already subscribed. Um, because we're always bringing new yummies. And until next time, ladies, please be kind to each other, support each other. God bless you, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.